Hi guys, Cy from Sinai Software. Uh, today we're going to go over the new scribe tools. Um, so we've completely rewritten these from our old scribe tools uh, and made some big massive changes. Uh, one of the things that um, you know was that we had problems with in the very beginning was dealing with undos, being able to cancel functions, not being multi-threaded. We've gone through and fixed all these issues. So um, to give you a quick example in the beginning, you know, if I go now and grab this sort of drawing and say, hey, let's attach splines. One, it gives you a taskbar. Two, it's really fast. It goes through a lot of items. Now, some stuff in Max we can't always get out of quickly. So, um, you know, like this, where it's going to be a function where it needs to find every single shape and create a new node and do everything like that. So it's going to slow it down. But in this case, we give you the ability to exit out now. So if I was to hit escape or go down here where the cancel button was, I could cancel out of this and it's gonna show me what is detached already. But to go back into this, if I go and undo all these functions, uh, our undo tree completely works and is very fast. So I was able to undo completely out of this to all the point where I've gone and attached this. So those are big changes in what we've added in here. Also, um, the ability to do bulk stuff now. So all of our, say, spline welds and um, redefines, they're all done by multiple items. So if I was going to select this now, this whole CAD, and I go in here and I say, I want to do a weld, it's on multiple objects now. So it's going to go through and we can sort of see, sorry, let me just zoom into this. You can see where all the start and end knots are. It's the same thing. It's yellow and 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 uh, white, so yellow is the start knots, white are all the rest of the knots. So I can go through here and do a live weld. Now this is a bigger CAD, so you're seeing a lot more stuff. You're gonna see a lot more stuff change. Um, so you can see it's a live weld now. So I don't need to do that, you know, that much of a weld. So I'm gonna back off a little bit and I'm just gonna say commit to that weld and it's gonna go through and attach and at the end of doing this function, so it's gonna say, yeah, it's removed 96,000 knots welding that all up and it only took four and a half seconds or 4.8 seconds. So um, same thing accounts for if you're gonna do say a um, optimized spline. So I'm going to select all those and you can see all these knots that used to be there are now all gone because it's going to go through and it's optimizing the whole, all what you've had selected. So, you know, if I go commit to this, it's now going, going through and it's going to clean up all that sort of stuff and optimize all these splines here. So it's gone through, it's done. Uh, it's removed, it's optimized and removed 6,000 more knots. Uh, so that's always good. So, um, Everything now is sort of, like I said, on a bulk process So um, and multi-threading. So let's just select this same guy and I'm going to go say find overlapping splines. Now, um, our overlapping splines used to be on a lot smaller scale. Now this is all multi-threaded. Uh, it's going to actually go through and it's going to look for, right now it's looking for all the exact overlapping segments, uh, which it's done. Uh, now it's going to go through, look for what's called partial overlapping. And with partial overlapping, and you can see it's done, it's found some already. So anything that's green doesn't have overlapping. Anything that's red does. So of course, we're going to select the red and we're going to say detach overlapping. So we'll let it do that function and I'll continue on explaining. So that partially overlapping um, spline is say you have a spline that's three meters long and inside of that you have another segment that's more like one meter long or three meter long splines that don't exactly overlap. We go through look for a lot of this stuff. Um, also, it, we have to account for, you know, Bezier handles, what sort of, you know, are you working with a straight line or a curve? So there's a lot of different things that we need to go through and look at with overlapping uh, splines themselves. Uh, we have this down to the point, like as you can see here, I'm selecting pretty much a whole, you know, elevation of this building. And we're going to go through, you know, we've already gone through and removed 96,000 knots. 
and now you can see that it's actually taken all those. So let's see, it's detached 6,000 segments, and it's been in under a minute. So the multi-threading is a big, big, big game changer for this. So let me just delete those. Um, we have a lot of extra tools in here. A lot of this stuff has stayed the same, uh, but we have rewritten it. So it is a lot better. Uh, overlapping spline, I mean, sorry, conforming splines. So you can see this guy's got a whole two knots in it. So there's not a lot of topology in here. But if I was to select all this and say, now conform to the surface, it's going to go down and it's going to conform all these splines to that surface. It figures out what sort of knots it needs. Uh, it creates extra knots so it can conform to that surface and then goes and cleans them up at the end. Now you don't have to actually select a surface. It's going to go and just go look what's below it and um, try and conform to that. So now it's a simple button in by itself. Um, then we also listen to you guys. Uh, there was a lot of issues with like, say, um, splines being in their wrong orientation. So if I was to go throw an extrude on this, you're going to see that this one's going straight up when it should have gone more out on its angle. Um, and this one's completely in the wrong direction for, um, you know, for a conform. So if I delete these, and I'll just select these and I'll say, you know, redraw me a new spline. And it's going to go redraw this new spline for these guys. It's got to figure out what it's going to do. Now if I go throw, throw an extrude on this, you can actually see they're going in the right direction of their splines. Now, we can't tell on the, you know, upside down or whatnot. So, you know, you might um, have to flip this spline um, either top or bottom or go in a negative or positive direction. All we can figure out is, you know, what's the majority of the, the splines and what direction does it need to go into when we redraw this spline. Uh, the other thing is uh, that also works on... Um, that also works on bigger splines as well. So right now, say I was to throw an extrude on this, you can see that this is going in the wrong direction as well. So, um, you know, and if, if I delete this now, and let's just go into the sub object and we'll just go grab this spline itself. And I was to go, you know, change this around to possibly this orientation, move it up and go back into that spline. And if I was to put an extrude on it, I mean, it's not even close to where it's supposed to be. Uh, but if I was to do a redraw spline on this and then throw an extrude now on it, it knows the direction that it's supposed to go. So it actually redraws that to the surface as well. Just gonna really quickly reset this scene. And we'll go in and take a look at some of our um, oh, also the, you know, when it comes to optimizing stuff as well, like, you know, I can grab the whole scene. It doesn't care about doing little small objects or whatnot. Our optimize and everything like that is just as, as quick as anything else. So, you, you know, you can move your spinner, run this down. Sorry, go back into, you know, giving yourself you know, a closer optimization of live, and you can actually see the changes that it needs to make in this spline. So, of course, if I want to run this down, I'm looking for less of an angle, uh, which will give me let more spline knots. I can actually go commit to that, and I have a better shape. Uh, the other thing is our spline array tool. So, this is quite big. Um, our spline array tool, and this works on multiple objects as well. You sort of select what you're going to select, hit the commit button, and, oops, wrong one. Uh, select what you're going to select and hit the um, use selected splines. Now, what this does is it does a spline array, uh, but in the spline array, if you have re repair intersection, this will actually go out and repair your spline where it intersects. Well, it tries to. I mean, there's going to be some scenarios where it's going to miss it. We tried to do the best part of the math that we can. Uh, you can have as many outlines as you want. Well, actually, you can have 50. Uh, but as that's going, you can sort of build yourself a whole live array. You can go up and down, um, whatever you want. Um, great little tool for this. Now, the other thing is, and let's just hide this original. Um, I can go in here and say make dotted lines 
And what this will give me is it'll give me dotted lines on that spline. So I can do that spline. I can also do the same thing as I can go out and it'll repair all the intersecting segments. So I can also run this out. Uh, I can say, you know, do infill. It's going to give me the spline that's in between and um, the one that's, it's going to give me the dotted line and the in between. Uh, I can go in and even say percentage line. You know, I want to turn on a percentage of this and draw my dotted lines and just give me a percentage, you know, a start offset and end offset, uh, which it'll do on both. And if I take this out, now I'll actually have um, the dotted lines, the in between, and the start or end offset. So you can get rid of the infill. Um, you can get rid of that percentage in the beginning. Um, it's pretty good live tool. Um, the other thing that we put in here is the ability to build buildings. Let's just get rid of the double lines. And let's say we're going to go and sort of figure out geometry for putting in windows and stuff like that. You can actually build your corner knots. So I can have every corner a different material and I can say, hey, doing the infill. And now I can actually build myself up, you know, separate floors. And it's going to go give me um, a whole bunch of different splines that I have all the corners and the um, center pieces for walls. Now, where this is really handy is going into like rail clone or our cyclone or whatnot. Gives the ability to build a whole bunch of different splines and stuff that's really going to change. So um, very powerful tool. And we'll probably do like its own video on this uh, as well. Uh, but I sort of just want to touch of all the new stuff that's in here. Um, we also have, um, right now, and you shouldn't change this, you're going to see threads. And this is sort of in its experimental stage. It sort of goes, figures out how many processors you have and how many threads we can safely use on stuff like searching for overlapping, um, removing overlapping, deleting over mapping, all, um, you know, when we're searching for conforming to surface, all sorts of stuff that we're running multi-threaded is right here. We'll probably remove this because we're actually going to switch to doing GPU and CPU to make it even faster. So um, that is our new scribe. So enjoy. Um, if you have any other questions, or you want to add something to this, um, we are going to be adding because we realize that a lot of you guys are still working in 2014, 2016. All these new spline tools that are coming out in like 2019, most big studios aren't going to switch to that. They're not going to switch to 2019 until they, you know, all the plugins are out, everything's stable. Um, it's just not the way big companies work. So as much as Max is throwing in these new tools, it's in the newer versions. And studios that are working in, say, 2017, uh, which is what a lot of studios are going to, um, are missing out on some of the tools that are in there. Now, also they're modifiers. So, uh, you know, if I want to go here and select everything in my scene and say, hey, you know what, I want to do an optimize and go through and be able to optimize all these splines, um, I can do that. I don't have to throw a modifier on top of each one of these splines and try and do that. So, um, thanks a lot guys. Um, check it out. We'll be putting up a video on the new uh, meshing tools as well because uh, we did a complete rewrite to that as well. Um, also, if you write your own Mac scripts, we have our own, oh it's right up here. We have our own um, Mac script tool. Now what this does is say I want to look for a tool in here and sort of um, I, I write Mac scripts for my own studio. But I want to use some of our C++ functions in stuff that we do. Um, you can go down here and let's just say find overlapping. Um, I can go in here to the scribe tool. I can go down to uh, find overlapping. So let's go down find open splines, find overlapping. Now, uh, we do give you the max script, a sample max script for this that you can send to the editor and you can run that. Um, we also, in that sample, we give you the ability to just take this and run it as a sample, so find overlapping. 
Uh, so if I was to go into, let's select, you know, these guys here, run that find overlapping, uh, they've all come back green. Um, so there's no overlapping splines in there. But what you're doing is you're executing our C++ functions from MaxScript now. It's just actually one simple line. So you can start going ahead and building your own tools and use our C++ functions in there. So... Uh, thanks a lot, guys, and check out our meshing video that uh, should be up there for our sculpt and all the new stuff we have in there. Thanks a lot, guys. See you.